These are the fastest SpaceX Starlink speeds that I've ever recorded. Let's go check them out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking a little bit about the recent speeds of SpaceX Starlink. Now, I've been watching these speeds over the last two years, 23 months that I've had SpaceX Starlink, and I've been monitoring them daily. I've been writing down logs. I'll put down maybe four or five tests here and there. I'll probably start a server. That's all it does is monitor, but I just haven't done that yet. I just do it myself because I actually want to see it, right? So I do tests, I would say every day, sometimes every other day, four or five tests over on speedtest.net. Some of you guys have asked me, should I use speedtest.net or should I use the app built into Starlink to get your speeds? My personal opinion is to use speedtest.net. Let it find the server that is closest to your pop, which is your point of presence. For me, my pop is in Atlanta, Georgia, even though I'm down here in South Florida. It is what it is. I don't even want to get into that. That's for a whole nother video. Anyways, it finds the pop that's closest to you and that's what it will associate with or use that server close to it to be able to do that testing. So you're going to get the best of the best that you can based on that location. So I personally say use speedtest.net in comparison to using or going by the speed test that you get through Starlink. I just get all kinds of crazy ass numbers on that app that they have built into it. So I just don't even use that anymore. That's just me. Your miles may vary. So there were some things that I was reading and uh, while I was reading these, I was like, wow, we're really starting to get up to that 5,000 satellite mark. And that's exactly what happened. So there was an article that came through and it was from NASA, Space News, something. Anyways, they were talking about this. I wanna just read a couple of paragraphs to you real quick. But then what I wanna do is show you my speed tests. I was floored. When I say floored, I was floored. There was a speed test that I got today that I recorded on video, and I'm gonna show it to you, that was the fastest that I've ever got, even back when I was in beta times where the thing was just wide open, over my original speed of 315 megabits down. That's what I got. That was the fastest speed that I ever got, and I got faster today. And I'm going to tell you why I believe these speeds are faster before the end of this video because I think it's important. And I think that it also will help you if you are a Starlink user and you kind of eh, put a back by and you're like, you know, this thing is just going slower and slower and slower. Bear with me. I do think you're going to see a change in the next couple of months like I've been talking about for a while. And today I recorded it and the change is here. And I'm going to tell you why I think the change is here. Anyways, before I get into this, as I always do, there's some housekeeping. I just want to say that if you enjoy this video, throw it a thumbs up. That will be helpful. Share it with your friends, family, colleagues, share it in Reddit or Facebook or wherever. Let's grow this channel. Also, if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button you can click down here. That'd be great. You could give a dollar or two if you want. If not, that's fine too. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you are subscribed, thank you. If you're not, consider doing so. Then click this little button over here. It's when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately, immediately. And if you haven't downloaded any of my books, go check them out. They are free. My eBooks can be found at jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. They are 100% once again, free. Go grab them. Also, if you want more Starlink goodness, after you watch this video, I'll put a link over here to the Starlink playlist. There's over 200 videos specific to Starlink. Go check them out. Finally, if you're looking for a VPN, look no further. Check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a 15% discount using the promo code JCristina, or you can go directly to jcristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash VPN, and you will get 15% off automatically. 
So now that all that housekeeping is done, I know people get upset about it, but just fast forward through it if you don't want to hear it. If I don't promote myself, who in the hell will? <laughs> anyway, so I took a look at the speeds, obviously, after reading this article. Let me just read these couple of paragraphs from this article, and then I want to show you these speeds. I was just, I was put aback. For sure. It was just amazing to me. Anyways, the article says, with SpaceX's goal of launching 100 times this year, in the coming weeks of SpaceX, we'll be launching many Starlink missions. This week's second Starlink mission is taking place on October 28th. The Falcon 9 rocket will take 22 more Starlink version 2 mini satellites into LEO, or low Earth orbit. An unknown Falcon 9 booster will complete its mission by returning to SpaceX's drone ship stationed on the West Coast. Of course, I still love you, the name of the drone ship. This ship will be stationed 631 kilometers downrange in the Pacific Ocean. The fairing will also be recovered around 681 kilometers downrange. Starlink is hitting a massive milestone with this flight. While there are around 4,400 operational Starlink satellites, this launch should put the number of active Starlink satellites in orbit over 5,000. 5,000, guys. 5,011, to be exact. The leftover 611 just need to raise their orbit to 530 kilometers to become operational. So if you didn't know how this works, basically SpaceX will launch these satellites into orbit, but they will only get to about, let's say 200 kilometers, 250 kilometers, and that's where they'll sit and find their orbital, let's say, trajectory, the pattern that they take around the Earth. Once they get there, they will now elevate themselves using their thrusters to the operational height or altitude. That operational altitude is 520 to 540 kilometers. They're saying 530 here. Those numbers are going to change a little bit in the future. And I've said this in the past, that 530 kilometers operational height is for now, where they are, but I believe there's going to be a lot more that are going to be lower, right around 320, 330 kilometers closer to Earth. We can talk about that in another video. But what we see now is there will be 5,011 operational momentarily in a very short period of time. This is massive. And what's really big here is over 600 of these, probably closer to 700, are the version 2 minis. And they're badass, all right? If you don't know, they are the equivalent to four of the version 1.5. So while they are the equivalent to four, they are also faster and they have built on E node Bs and other stuff for inter satellite, cell phone, connect, a lot of stuff going on there. All right. So they are the most advanced and fastest, which is great. And after doing some speed tests today, I think I found at least one of them. Okay. Because I got some speeds that were absolutely sick. I'm gonna bring them up on the screen while I'm talking to you. So, all right, so as you can see, this first test, we're coming in at about 250, 260 megabits down. We ended up with 267.8. Unbelievable. That is absolutely unbelievable. That is so fast in comparison to what we we're doing just last week. But now watch this. Now, the up speed is 12.88, which is not that great, but watch what happens now with this test. This is absolutely just awe-inspiring to me because this is faster than Ever. This is my fastest speed test that I've ever seen, including back in beta times. Now, beta times was a thing where it was wide open, so we didn't have a problem with speed, right? But look at this, 375.06, 375. My highest speed was 315, like I told you before. Now, we have an up speed of 14.44. Let's do another test. 14.44. Now, in my fastest days back in beta, when I was getting 315 down, I was also getting about 43 up, 
44, 45. Every once in a while, we get close to that 50. So the up speed is still slower. But look at this speed, 243.00. That is extremely fast. But now look what happens with the up speed. You can tell that it's just becoming lethargic. And I think that that is more akin to what is going on with my local area and not so much with the satellite. Now, I'm gonna keep on doing some tests here. I'm gonna keep running them on the screen while I jabber my mouth here. Now, what I normally do is I'll do 10 tests and I'll throw away the fastest and I'll throw away the slowest, like outliers, and do a mean or an average of that. Well, this time I did 18 in a row, all right? And I took an average of all of those. And I'll give you what those numbers are in just a second. But what I have found here doing these tests and knowing how fast these satellites are going overhead. They're traveling at about 17,000 miles per hour. Now, even though I did these tests over and over and over and over, over the course of, let's say, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, somewhere around there, during that period of time, I'm certain that we changed satellites, and we can tell by the speeds that that has happened. I am speculating that when we see speeds of 375 megabits down here in the US, I'm not talking about overseas where they're seeing these 200 plus megabits all the time because there's no congestion. I'm talking about here in the US. When we're seeing those type of speeds bordering the cusp of 400 megabits down, which is insane to me, okay? I think what we're seeing is the use of a Starlink version 2.0 mini. So most likely at that time when I got that crazy speed and some of the other speeds that I have notated too, and I'll tell you what those are in just a minute. I was getting 200, 230, 240, all a whole bunch over 200, 250 megabits down. That is really good. What I did notice here is when I saw those extremely fast speeds, what I also noticed was my latency was lower. So instead of having a latency of, let's say, 40, 45 milliseconds, sometime I was getting latency of like 50, 55 milliseconds last week and the week before. But now we're seeing in the 40s, which is nice. But what I've noticed with these extremely fast speeds, the latency is coming down also. 38 milliseconds, 34. I believe I had one that was like 32 or 31 milliseconds, getting close into those 20s that we always want. My personal opinion is if we can get satellite sitting at around 25, maybe even 20 milliseconds, that would be unbelievable. Because remember, fiber is only sitting at like eight milliseconds to 12, 10 milliseconds. So if you could get 20 out of a satellite connection, Ask anybody that has HughesNet or Viasat what kind of milliseconds, what kind of latency they're getting. <laughs> Some of these people will tell you 200, 300. Some people will say a second of latency. Crazy latency. That's almost unusable. All right. Now, what I did notice was even though some of these speeds were really fast, like 375 megabits down, 250, 240, 230, whatever, really fast, every once in a while, we would see an upload speed of like four megabits up, seven megabits up, five megabits up. What the hell is that? So I think that has to do with congestion because it's a lot easier to send data down than it is to push it up. Depends on the location and how many people are using that uplink where it is actually receiving the connection from us, from our dishy, or as I call mine, Mr. Bevel. So I think that's what is happening here. But when we see speeds that are like 71 megabits down and then 11 or 12 megabits up. Those slow speeds of the low 100 megabits, 71 megabits, really slow. Those numbers, I guarantee you, are from the old version one satellites, maybe even the version 1.5s. And they become saturated a lot quicker than the 2.0 minis. So I think that's why we're seeing these really outlandish speeds because I most most likely during that time when we saw that 375.06 megabits down with an up speed of nearly 15 megabits up, that transmission, I will almost guarantee you, was sent 
from my dish to a version two mini satellite. I seriously doubt that I was transmitting to a version one or even a version 1.5. So what kind of speeds did I get out of these 18 tests and what was my average? Well, what I'll do is I'll throw all the tests up on the screen, maybe over here. So you can do the math if you want to see if I got the math done right or not. But out of all of these, we saw some of those low speeds right around that 71 megabits down. And the fastest of them at that 375 megabits down. We also had a few at 267.8, 230. 249, 243, 235, 240, 230, 234. These are really fast download speeds. Now on the upload side, not too bad either. There was a few that were like 4.8 megabits up, 7.1, which is horrible, 6.2 and 1, 9.6. Those are slow. But then we filled them in with all of those 10 plus megabits as SpaceX supposedly guarantees. So we were seeing 12.8, 14s, some 13s. I got a 19. I didn't see anything over 20. So the highest speed that I was able to get on the upload speed was 19.96. I got one that was a 19.85. And that's really it. Nothing in the 20s. But all in all, if I can get, let's say 19.9, let's call it 20 on the up speed and a down speed of 375, are you kidding me? That is fantastic, guys. So if we do the average, I do the math and I do the division on the 18, I end up with 195 megabits down and an upload average of 12 megabits up. That is really not bad considering Considering just a week or two ago, we were down at 100, 110, sometimes down in the 80s. There was a period of time that I wasn't getting anything faster than 100. And now we're literally right on the cusp of 200 on average with that one crazy one of 375 megabits down. So I'm really encouraged by these numbers. And I like to do these videos for you like once a month to tell you what I'm seeing. Now you might see something different. Now, I want you to do the exact same thing that I did, if you could. Do some tests and then take an average and then down below, share. Share what your up speed is, share what your down speed is, share what your latency is on average, and then finally, where are you located? All right, because location, location, location is so important. Very, very important. Share this information so that others that are looking to purchase Starlink or have Starlink that is really getting to a point where they're like getting pissed because it's going so slow, maybe they can get some encouragement. And that's why I do this. Sometimes I'll get some really bad numbers and I'll share those. Today, I got some exceptional numbers, so I wanna share them with you also. Because as always, this channel is unbiased. I give you the positive, I give you the negative, and then allow you to be the judge. So once again, if you enjoy this, throw the video a thumbs up, go down in the comments, share your experience. Let us know if you have Starlink. If you don't, are you looking into buying Starlink? Is it something that will help you? Are you in an area that's very rural that you have some just horrible, horrible speeds? Like you have Viasat or you have Usenet or maybe some junk AT&T U-verse or DSL or something and you want something that looks more like this. Let us know, once again, down below. Throw the video a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.